Hello, uh, welcome to Facebook Live. I am Bob Hergeth with the Chicago Sun-Times. With me is Dr. Uh, Robert Murphy from um, Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine and also some other titles, if you don't mind uh, sharing them. <laughs> I'm the Executive Director of the Institute for Global Health and I'm a professor of infectious diseases. Gotcha. And we're here to talk about uh, coronavirus. Obviously it's captivating and, and, and just uh, become the, um, the, the most important um, topic in the country right now and obviously we these newsrooms like this we've had to sort of uh, scramble and become experts um, at uh, writing about this and researching this in terms of a news perspective and we also like to bring in experts to talk to who really have dug into this and and have uh, expertise so if you have a question throughout this process um, you're on Facebook just uh, type in a little question or a comment and if we can we'll get to it we uh, um, we'll, we'll do our best um, and also, just so you know, that we're going to be recording this as we post it back on Facebook once it's all done. In case you miss something or want to rewatch it, it'll also be posted on our website and probably on YouTube as well, our YouTube channel, Chicago Sun Times. And uh, suntimes.com is our website. Also, uh, wanted to get some paper, uh, some stuff out of the way that we're going to be, uh, we've created a uh, free um, newsletter that's going to be uh, out every day uh, with uh, links to stories and uh, crucial information about the coronavirus and uh, its impacts and its uh, developments as we have. So thanks for joining us. So uh, the first question is, and, and some of these questions are probably, uh, have been tread over, some are, 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 are new, but we want to kind of get just uh, dig into this and really kind of figure out um, what's the latest. So I mean, the first question is a broad one, which is explain please, you know, how we got here, where we're at and where we're going with the coronavirus. Well, coronaviruses have been around for a long time, probably, hundreds of years. Okay. Uh, we first discovered them maybe about 50 years ago or so. Uh, and they were the ones that we found, there's six that affect humans. Uh, the first ones really just uh, caused the common cold. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe about 15% of the common colds are caused by a coronavirus. Okay. Very rarely are they uh, a serious disease and they don't progress to anything uh, noteworthy. So there wasn't much interest in really studying them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were more of just a nuisance. Then we had SARS, you've probably heard of SARS. Uh, mm -hmm. SARS is also a coronavirus. Matter of fact, this current virus is called SARS-CoV-2. So okay. it's, it's a related, matter of fact, about 60 or 70% genetically related. So it's very close to SARS. Okay. So SARS came along and the difference was 10% of the people that got it died. Okay. And that of course was a huge crisis. That ultimately though responded to regular root, you know, strong public health measures, social distancing, isolation, washing your hands, and it was gone. Right. Only about uh, fewer than 10,000 people were affected and 800 died. Okay. So we thought, and then that disappeared. Uh, so it uh, just went away with uh, good public health. So then people got disinterested in that again. Right. And uh, there's very little work being done in that area now. So we're, uh, it's understudied. Right. Then along came MERS. You may have heard of yeah, MERS. Of course, sure. Yeah. So MERS is limited to the Middle East. Uh, much fewer people, many fewer people got MERS. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't left the Middle East, but it had a mortality rate of 30%. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that didn't go away completely. Right. It's still there. But since it was limited there, it didn't seem to be expanding, not too much interest. Right. Then we have coronavirus, this yeah. coronavirus, right. uh, SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. Right. Uh, that's the official name of the disease. and. That's where we are today. It was uh, identified uh, by some clinical physicians uh, in China, in the Wuhan area, and uh, they were the ones saying, hey, we have this pneumonia, we don't know what it is, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they were the ones that discovered it. Gotcha. Also, I should note that if you, uh, for those of you out there, you can ask questions, uh, pose questions via Twitter for us too, and we'll get to them if we can. Um, also, so, so I know you don't have a crystal ball, Nobody does here, um, and uh, that's why we're here talking in part because mm -hmm. nobody really knows where this is going, but what's your best guess? Where is it sort of trending? Um, what does the future where, where potentially the future? hold? Okay. This uh, type of infection, similar to influenza, the flu, uh, they run a course, mm -hmm. and they go away, mm -hmm. or they at least go down to a dull roar. Uh, since very few people have been exposed to this particular virus, there's mm -hmm. really no what we call native immunity. There's no, everyone is susceptible to getting this thing. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese got it in the, probably the beginning of December. Mm -hmm. So now where are we? December, January, February, we're three and a half months and they are just peaking uh, right now. They have right. very few ca new cases per day now, if you right. see. So you'll see the whole 
Chinese uh, COVID-19 epidemic just kind of slowly just kind of peter out over the next couple of months. So it's probably in a six month kind of uh, time frame. So we in started- terms of, In terms of winding down. In terms winding down. So we're two months behind them. Okay. And so we're just on the uptick. Right. But uh, one little complication that we have, uh, which was the same complication they had, is that we had massive denial that this was gonna be a big problem. And so we had delays in the testing and getting people ready uh, right. for this uh, epidemic. Right. The Chinese did the, made the same mistake, and we made the same mistake too. Right, okay, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get to a couple more questions related to that in a second. Um, one question I think a lot of people have, especially parents, you know, I mean, this is, this is sort of cold and flu season, hopefully, and, anyway, even maybe the tail end, but yeah. it's still there. Yeah. Uh, runny noses, sniffles, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the flu flu as well as um, uh, allergies I mean the change in seasons mm -hmm. and all that yeah. kind of stuff so um, how do you how do you deal yeah. with you know sort of balancing that versus like kind of the normal um, sort of um, wear and tear in your body and the, and the sneezing and stuff like that versus wow. this when you get worried how do you sort of dis distinguish between the two you you clinically you can't uh, you can make a prediction if, if you came to me and said you know I've had a fever for three days I have a deep cough and I'm short of breath mm -hmm. Okay, there's a very higher chance that you have COVID-19, right. all right. If you come in and say, oh, my nose is running, I don't have any fever, you know, you probably have a cold, but it could also be the presenting symptoms of COVID-19. Okay. You can't tell clinically. Okay. So everybody that's going to come down with symptoms of a cold, flu or cough, whatever, uh, really needs to be tested. Now that's been the problem. Right. We don't have the tests. Right. Now they're coming out. Uh, and you're going to see over the next couple of weeks that this test, there's going to be, there already is a drive-through testing facility in Barrington, Illinois. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, and there is, uh, we are at Northwestern are talking about setting up a drive-through facility mm -hmm. as well. And you're going to see this all over, mm -hmm. all over the country. What does a drive-through facility look like? It just looks like a drive, it looks like you're getting a Big Mac, all right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you just drive up, somebody in a, all gowned up and everything will swab your nose and throat, put it in, get the information from you, get your phone number, and uh, you should have the results uh, in probably 24 to 48 hours. Okay, and then in the meantime, I mean, so what, what, what's the balance between going to the doctor versus not, calling the doctor versus not, going to the ER versus not? For people that, you know, maybe have a bad cold and they're worried that it if is you, this. Uh, we're hoping that people get the test in an in a isolated facility, like a drive through facility or as what they did at Rush. They set up a little tent, mm -hmm. heated, I hope, uh, outside uh, right. the emergency room, uh, and people can go there and get tested. Okay. A couple of questions are coming in from Facebook, and we want to get to a couple. Um, mm -hmm. Nicole was, is asking, what about those that have asthma? Asthma, you you're going to do worse, yeah. uh, just like you will with any other infection. Asthmatics uh, are at much higher risk for complications with any respiratory tract infection. Okay. And uh, another, another question on about what the best medicine uh, or food to take if you, if you get this. Uh, another question from Facebook. Stay hydrated. That's all you can do. That's all you can really There's do. There's no medication yet. And again, well, speaking of uh, and no medication, also no vaccine, although what's the status? I mean, I've seen you know, within a year, hopefully a vaccine online. Is that about where are we at now with that? Vaccine, uh, it turns out, uh, because of the work on SARS, mm -hmm. uh, work with the vaccine had already progressed to a certain point, and okay. then it was halted. So that has been restarted. We know the proteins. We know how to actually make a vaccine for this. Uh, first vaccine will go into humans, testing experimentally, uh, probably within two to three months. Mm -hmm. And then it will have to be tested and proven that it works. Uh, earliest, it's going to be out 12 to 18 months. Okay. Probably the epidemic will be over. Okay. Um, another question for Facebook uh, in terms of just how, how exactly is the spread? This, okay, there's a very virus. good, there's a, that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. Some viruses are spread aerosol, 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 by aerosols. In other right. words, they're in the air. Right. Um, and you just breathe it in and you get it. You know, tuberculosis can go like that. Mm -hmm. uh, some influenza sometimes goes like that. But this is absolutely spread by droplets. Okay. So you cough on somebody, you sneeze on somebody, you sneeze into your hand, you have your mouth or nose fluids on your hand, then you touch somebody, you shake somebody's hand, you touch the table over here, you touch a cup. Uh, that's how it's spread. 
And unfortunately, the virus can last up to several days on hard surfaces. Mm -hmm. So people have to really be cleaning the areas and washing their hands uh, very regularly to get rid of this thing. It's pretty easy to clean. Soap and water does a great job. Okay. Uh, and any 60% or more alcohol solution uh, will kill it. Uh, diluted bleach kills it. It's very easy to kill, okay. but you have to do it. Right. Okay. And a reminder also to our viewers, suntimes.com is our website, uh, Facebook, Suntimes page where you're watching. Uh, we have a lot of resources on there already, a lot of stories that we've been doing for, for days and they will continue to be up there. And even, even if you're not a subscriber through the weekend, you can access them um, uh, for free. And also uh, we do have this new um, newsletter out that, that is also free. You can access through our website, our coronavirus uh, um, landing page uh, to sign up and to get uh, up-to-date information, the latest stories, the latest facts, and the latest facts, at least as of last night, was about 30-plus people in Illinois. That 32, tested, right? as of last night. Okay. But the, the great thing about social media and this disease is that there's so much information out yeah. there. Just make sure you're getting legitimate information. Right. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, the Illinois Department of Public Health, mm -hmm. the WHO all have incredible resources. And, uh, and most of the major hospitals here. Yeah. Be careful of other sources giving you information because right. there's a lot of real garbage out there that can be dangerous. Right. And again, one of the reasons we're doing this is kind of condense uh, information, talk to an expert, and try mm -hmm. and cut through this and kind of get the latest. So, so thanks again for being here. Um, one question now also coming on um, through Facebook is one that we all probably have about travel. I mean, it is spring break for a lot of people. Uh, people had trips booked or were thinking about it. Summer is here. Uh, you know, what, what should we be doing travel-wise domestically, internationally? Should we just hunker down, stay at home, jump in the car? Is it safe to fly? I mean, I, I know you don't have every last answer necessarily, but how would you guide people the best you can? Okay, I travel 300,000 miles a year. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I travel more than pilots, some yeah. pilots anyway. I understand the whole travel situation. The, look at what the smartest people in the country are doing. People who work with the virus, people at universities and government agencies. You know what they've done? What? They've banned all domestic and international travel. Okay. With very few exceptions. Right. All. Right. So that's what the people that know what they're doing, the experts, that's what they are doing. Right. So there are places that don't you know, there is no ban on international travel right. except to, uh, you know, a very few places, right. Iran and uh, China, uh, South Korea, strongly uh, uh, not recommended. Uh, but really, there's so much of this around the world right now. Uh, Italy, uh, for the big example, sure. but now Spain is coming up right yep. behind them. Um, you should not be traveling internationally. Okay. I mean, there's emergencies that you, sure. you know, have to do and stuff like that, but you should not be traveling internationally, and actually, you should be deferring all non-essential travel, even domestically. Okay. Uh, good. We got for now. For now. For right now. For now. And then one thing I, I do want to add to that sure. is that you know, 80% of people who get this infection actually do quite well. Okay. They don't even have to be in a hospital, or no, they go home and they drink, uh, have chicken soup and a lot of fluid, right. and they do fine. But if you are at high risk you have a big chance of getting hospitalized and you have a higher chance of mortality. Right. So if you're over 60, if you have underlying lung disease, underlying uh, cardiovascular disease, even if you have hypertension, diabetes, or you had cancer right. in the past, this is all considered high risk. You have a much higher chance of uh, having a very serious uh, case and even in higher mortality. So that is a group, which is one third of the United States, by the way, that really has to be very careful. Right. And the rest of us, you know, the, the problem with the people who are healthy, who are traveling, they're going to be at a higher risk of getting it, and guess who they're gonna give it to? They're gonna right. give it to the people that are at high right. risk. So uh, at this particular point in the stage of an epidemic, non-essential travel, you should avoid at all possible costs. Gotcha. More questions coming in through Facebook. Thank you again for, for um, uh, you, those of you out there who are watching and listening. Um, can we get the virus from food? Good question. Can we what? Get the virus from food. Food. Probably not. Okay. Now, food's cooked. Cooking would uh, get rid of it. I suppose it could be on uh, something that wasn't cooked, but this is not the way it's being transmitted. Right. It's being transmitted from contamination to people's hands and on surfaces. Okay. Another question. Can people with no symptoms gather in small groups in a home or go out to eat, assuming hand washing and assuming there's some distance uh, is being yeah. observed? Well. 
it's the, you, you mentioned the term sort of uh, social distancing. Right. I had never heard of this term actually until this epidemic, but this is a great term and it's something that we can practice. So we're not saying you have to stay in your home and don't ever go out. Okay. You're going to have to go out. You're going to have to get food. You're going to have to get medicine. You're going to have emergencies. You're going to you will, you will have to do some socialization. But what do you do? You don't shake anybody's hand anymore. Mm -hmm. That's number you one. You and I did the elbow bump. We did the elbow bump yeah. when I uh, came in earlier. And uh, you know, we can. I think it's good to make fun of it. But it, you know, it's uh, right. it, it. People should just stop doing simple stuff like that. Right. Uh, the general guideline is to try to stay six feet away from people. Okay, we're about uh -oh. uh, three feet, but right. uh, I don't think we can get the wide enough angle right. uh, lens here. But of course, we're not in a real high COVID area. Right. So it depends on the environment, how much, how much virus is in your, your environment, right. uh, and uh, how, if, are you at high risk or not high risk, uh, and, the, and the situation. Right. Uh, for instance, your room here. You know, you have a lot of people in this room, and like you told me or before we started the thing, some people are going to be working from home. Okay. And that's going to happen. But everybody probably doesn't have to work at home. Okay. Maybe if you had half the number of people in here, it probably would be okay. Uh, we don't have to get hysterical about it, uh, but we just have to use common sense. Okay. But, and that that uh, segues into, I think, an important question for a lot of people, I mean, mental health. You know, mental health issues are just are, are, are so important and they're so pronounced. A lot of children, for instance, uh, younger people ever, of all ages, of course, and uh, people are worried about this. And um, and some people really, I mean, really, really worried. And um, mm -hmm. so how is this affecting mental health and how does that how should people address that? The stress of, uh, of worrying about this. Do they have mm -hmm. it? Do their loved ones have this? And how do they take care of themselves? Well, I think uh, people have to put it into perspective. You know, we have 7 billion people in the world, right? And they've only uh, 130,000 people have gotten infected. Right. So uh, more people don't have it than have it, obviously. Uh, and I, th I think that knowing the facts and knowing what the real risk is, I think is, is some kind of comfort. Uh, and we need really good leadership. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to say that the federal leadership has been pretty spotty. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who's head of the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases at yeah. the National Institutes for Health, the NIH, right. he has been fantastic. Okay. That guy is one of the smartest public health people in the world. Okay. You know, if you see him on television, listen to what he says, and nobody is uh, directing him. Right. There's been a lot of other misinformation, downplaying, uh, confusing statements uh, that have come out uh, from other people. Uh, you know, that's the way it goes. This, this, this disease has not been handled well. Right. Statewide, we're actually doing pretty good. Uh, I have to commend the governor, uh, J.B. Pritzker, okay. and his uh, uh, director of public health, um, Ngozi, um, I'm gonna mispronounce her last name, so just Ngozi, sure. that uh, they're doing a very good job with the messaging, and the governor has been out there um, giving, I think, a calming message and also taking some very bold steps, mm -hmm. banning big group meetings. Right. Uh, he's, he's going uh, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. The way these epidemics work, if you don't take the drastic action at the beginning, you pay for it in right. the end. And uh, what, I, what I'm recommending uh, to the public health people here, and I'm a university professor, so I can make any recommendation <laughs> I want. I don't have to suffer any consequences. Right. But uh, is that they should even be more aggressive. Right. Now is the time to be aggressive. Okay. Look what happened in Spain. Look what's happening in Spain. Yeah. Look what's happening in Italy. Mm -hmm. You have an entire 60 million person country in lockdown. Ground to a halt. Halt. You don't. You can't travel anywhere. There's police everywhere. You can't. You can't go anywhere. You can only go to the grocery store and the pharmacy. Right. Those are the only stores that are open. Okay, a couple more questions. We're, we're, we, we don't have too much more time, but I wanted to get a few more questions from our Facebook audience, uh, from our viewers and readers and uh, listeners. So, uh, can testing identify? If you get tested, and let's say you've already had the disease, will it and you sort of pass through and you're all better? Will will a test detect that? I think that's the question. Yes, that's actually a really good question. Okay. It's a very important question. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay. You get the disease, so you know you will. That test will be positive on day one that you feel sick. Okay. That's the data that we have so far, right. and that will stay in your system uh, for a period of days or weeks, 
and you're t ultimately you will test negative. And when you test negative two times, 24 hours apart, you're done. Okay. Uh, there was a question on the screen a second ago about uh, HIV antivirals and whether they um, have any uh, interface. Will they work against COVID-19? Uh, there was some, what they're talking about is the drug Kaletra, a drug made by Abbott. Actually, I treated the first patient with HIV in the world with that drug. Really? Yeah, here in Chicago. Okay. Uh -huh. I've done, uh, my background is virology, so I worked in the AIDS field and hepatitis fields for many years. Anyhow, they, uh, there was some preliminary information that uh, this drug, Kaletra, which is actually called Lopinavir, uh, had some activity against this. Uh, I think the data is pretty weak. Okay. Um, I would be surprised if it would work. Uh, it's worth uh, maybe uh, investigating further, but I highly recommend people don't go run out and take that drug. Okay, a couple more. Um, one one uh, a Facebook uh, viewer asks, says that they're worried because I'm uninsured and don't have the funds to get tested for coronavirus if I ever do get the symptoms. What do you suggest I, I do? Uh, well, sure. you're bringing up probably the biggest hole in the whole medical system here and that getting any kind of care, you walk in the emergency room, you can, you're going to spend hundreds or if not thousands of dollars. They do a chest x-ray, a chest CT, they test you for a bunch of things, it, you, you know, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. And the working poor suffer the most. Uh, because if they don't have any insurance, they're going to get the full, what they call the rack rate, you know, just the, the most expensive way, and then, you know, oh, it's just a terrible thing. So Pritzker has been pretty smart, uh, governor-wise, and he's, uh, for people with insurance, he's, he's asked the insurance companies to do the test for nothing, no deductible, nothing like that. Now, this is a voluntary thing, sure. you know, maybe your, your company will do it, maybe it, right. it, it won't do it. Uh, some of the places have said, once these tests become more available, that they're not going to charge for them. But they would rather do a free test that probably costs them about, yeah. I don't know, 10 or $20, sure. to, uh, rather than have them come in an emergency room, contaminate everybody, including the staff, and that causes a multi-million dollar disaster. Sure. So it, it behooves everybody to really allow anybody that needs a test to have it done. The one thing is, if you have absolutely no symptoms, mm -hmm. probably they're not going to do the test. Right. You as have to have right at now. least symptoms of an upper respiratory tract right. infection. What are the recommendations for uh, newborns? We've got a couple more minutes here, but what yeah. are the recommendations for newborns and also for uh, pregnant, pregnant women? Mm -hmm. I mean, in dealing with this and being taking care of themselves and their, and their uh, children. Well, the, the, good thing, the, the, the good thing and a very unusual thing with this uh, viral infection is that Children um, seem to have a very mild course of disease, and maybe even young adults. In China, nobody under 10 years of age actually died from coronavirus, okay. and they have the most cases. Sure. Uh, in South Korea, which has a much better health system, uh, they have reported either none or very few deaths in people under 30. Mm -hmm. So as far as the kids go, you know, they can get it, you know, they get every infection sure. known to man, you know. Right. Uh, I mean, I've worked in infectious disease for years. I never got sick from a patient. I, as soon as my really? kids, as soon as my kids went to day school, I got was sick every month. You know, <laughs> but anyway, they um, the kids aren't bad. As far as pregnancy goes, we haven't seen uh, like a, com a complication like uh, uh, a birth defect, like with Zika virus, mm -hmm. or we haven't seen like preterm labor or something like that. Or the the Chinese have not really reported that. So. Okay. We're thinking that a pregnant woman, if she did get infected, it would be like if she got any other kind of cold or something, as okay. long as she didn't get really sick herself. Of course, I think pregnant women should behave like more in the high-risk group and really avoid uh, uh, situations where she's ex exposed to many people. Okay. Time for one last question from our, uh, from our viewers. When is it likely to peak in the Chicago area? You did talk a little bit about sort of generically, any mm -hmm. sort of insight about our region, our state? Well, we've got, so if you look at the map, uh, we're not very high up in the numbers on the map, which is great. Yeah. It's Seattle in the Washington area. It's basically all of California, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. New York City and Boston, okay. each with its own thing. The rest of the states have not too many cases reported so far. The problem is this testing issue in that, of course, you don't have it if you don't do the test. Right. So as this testing thing ramps up, you can make a, a better judgment as to how bad it's going to be. Right. So in the next two weeks is the, the key time. We'll get a good handle. We'll on get this. a good handle actually on a number. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're at 32 today. 
uh, when in two weeks from now, are we going to be 100, 300, yeah. 1,000, 3,000 in Illinois? Yeah. Uh, we don't know. We have no idea. So we'll see. Uh, I think it's going to be on the lower side in the other parts of the United States. But as soon as things start getting out of control, they can't control it anymore. Right. So I think New York, California, Washington, maybe Boston, uh, it might be too late for them. They're going to be like Spain and Italy, maybe. Wow. I hope not, but you know. Yeah, but you don't know. But this is because of the testing problem. Yeah. Unable to actually do the test. You know, Spain, you know, they went from just a couple hundred cases to you know, almost 5,000 cases yeah. now. They, you know, today, this morning, they closed all the bars. Right. And uh, I guess that means the restaurants and everything else yeah. there. I mean, that's a, that's a very severe yeah. uh, public health measure to take. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Thank Robert Murphy. You. Thank you so much. I'm Bob Hergert with The Sun-Times. Again, it's been Facebook Live talking about the coronavirus as best we can and condensing some of these issues and uh, doing our best to get you what we know and what the experts know. Uh, we will continue coverage, obviously, uh, on our website, suntimes.com on Facebook, the Sun-Times page. This video will be available after the fact, uh, posted on Facebook on our Facebook page, as well as our homepage, and uh, probably on YouTube as well. Again, we have a newsletter that's free to subscribe to, uh, suntimes.com, go to our coronavirus uh, landing page and sign up, and then every day, uh, new information as this evolving, uh, serious uh, situation, you know, continues, and, and uh, we hope for the best, but uh, thanks for joining us.